Let's quickly mention Network Boot and Install, my 8-year-old daughter's favourite technology. Huh, how come my 8-year-old daughter's favourite tech then? Well, booting and installing over the network uses a technology called PXE, an acronym for Preboot Execution Environment. But it's pronounced, at least by most people, as Pixie. So, kind of like Pixie Dust or Fairy Dust. And my daughter loves fairies. Anyway, so it's possible to boot and install RHEL 6 from the network using Pixie. And in enterprise environments, installing via Pixie is pretty common. In fact, actually, we can configure RHEL as either a Pixie client or a Pixie server, meaning that RHEL can boot and install from a Pixie server as well as be that Pixie server that provides other machines with the ability to boot and install from the network. But for us, we're interested in how the early stages of the Pixie boot process works, as it's quite a bit different to booting from disk. After all, right, most networks don't have a master boot record located at cylinder 0, head 0, sector 1. So, first things first, we need to have a server and that server obviously needs a network card, a NIC. But not just any old NIC, a NIC that supports Pixie Boot. And that NIC needs to be listed in the BIOS's list of bootable devices. In fact, to be used, it needs to be at the top of the list, or at least above any of the devices that have a valid bootloader. Otherwise, one of those other devices will be picked first by the BIOS, and the BIOS will never get as far as trying the Pixie boot. Next, we need a DHCP server, and we also need a TFTP server. So, a NIC with a Pixie stack, and a BIOS that supports using a Pixie NIC as a boot device. Then, a DHCP server and a TFTP server. And the TFTP server also needs the relevant PixieLinux.0 image file. Then, at a high level, OK, the Pixie-capable NIC broadcasts an extended DHCP discover packets on the network, and they get picked up by the DHCP server. The DHCP server then responds with the address of one or more TFTP servers, and the location of the boot files on the TFTP server. Now, we're compressing things a little here, OK, because we're just giving that high-level overview. We'll maybe go into more detail in a future course on installing RHEL, but for now, right, this is enough to give us an understanding. Now, this information from the DHCP server comes back just the same as, and along with, the standard IP configuration data that hosts normally get from the DHCP server when they power up. Our server over here then goes and contacts the TFTP server and requests the boot image, that Pixie Linux.0 network boot program. This is then downloaded into memory and executed. And from then on, it's uh, pretty much the same as a standard boot and install process, other than files, config files, and other resources are pulled from the network rather than a locally attached disk. And one final word of warning, OK? The Pixie server really should live in a trusted area of the network as the services that it provides aren't secure. Same goes for any DHCP service, I suppose, as well. They need to be trusted because they hand out the Pixie details. And that's us done. Let's go wrap up the module.